Resistor. Hello everyone, so this is the end of week 4 of development on the Resistor game. I was able to find a tip on how to eliminate the beginning gray distortion of the video, so I'm going to give it a try with this video. So as you can probably see, I've been made many graphical changes to the title screen. First of all, each letter in the Resistor title will zoom in from the back. Also, you'll see it now has a scrolling background that was basically a picture of one of my computer cards. Then I was able to use GIMP to make that a seamless image. So now it looks like it continuously scrolls with no breaks. I also added a gradient to the background that goes from transparent to a light green color. That way it gives the appearance as if the computer background image just fades into the green. I also changed the font for the main menu items and I also added a background image for the main menu items. So as you select each item it looks like it's getting this raised effect. So the level screen basically looks pretty much the same as it has except for one change that you may notice is that on the very first stage you only have access to two objects. You only have access to the level one resistor. The reason that I did this is because originally you could use a very high level resistor to reduce the flow down to zero and then use that to connect to all of the LEDs to quickly complete the stage. Level, 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 complete. So now I have all of the level complete logic added to its own level complete screen, and I took all of that out of the game level screen to make it a little bit more modular. Another problem that I noticed was that you could have two different wires with two different flow values. So in this case I have a wire with a zero value and then one with a one value below. So if I take those two wires and extend them and make them join together, then before it would look like one continuous wire with two different flow values and this was really confusing because you couldn't ever really tell what was the current flow value of a wire. But now I added logic so that where it has two different flow values that are no longer connected. So I'll go ahead and connect that one to this LED. And the other problem that I noticed is if you placed a wire next to two objects that had different flow values, so in this case the one above has a zero value and the one to the left has a one value. So before the player would never really know what value the new wire would get. It was all basically based on the if then else statement. So now I look at all of the adjacent squares and now I take the highest value of all the wires or objects in the adjacent cell. So in this case the highest value is 1. So when I place a new wire it gets the value 1 and it's connected to the 1 flow wire. Level, 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 complete. One other issue that I noticed before was that whenever you wanted to place wires continuously, you would have to press the confirm button, then press over, then press confirm, and then press over, and then press confirm again, which really didn't feel like solid gameplay control. So now I have it where you can just hold the confirm or A button, and then just hold, press the stick in the direction you want to go and now it will continuously lay wires. You can't do that with the resistors now because those now have a cooldown. So as you can see when I placed that resistor it had it was blacked out until the cooldown period was over. 
One other feature I added was whenever you bust a light, which I'm getting ready to do in this condition, because I have a wire that has a value of 2 getting ready to connect to an LED of value 1. Game over! As you saw there, the LED now has a red color whenever it busts. That way it gives the player a little bit of feedback on why they lost the stage. Previously it would transition directly to the game over screen and you really never knew why you lost the level. Resistor. So here's my current level select screen. It needs a lot of work and I'll probably put some time into this, but basically what I want this screen to do is show the player all of the ranks that they have achieved for each of the levels. So for now, you'll basically see a lot of negative one values. So that means the player has not achieved any ranks for those levels. But the levels they have completed, the zeros represent the S ranks, the one represents an A rank, and threes represent a C rank. So I'll need to do some work to actually make those display the S, A, B, and C letters. And also another issue is that I can select a level higher than a level that I have completed. So I want to make it so that the player can only select a level that is one greater than the levels that they have completed. So now I have 40 total levels in the game. And as you can see, the graphics in the main levels are still very simplistic. It looks like they could have been created in Microsoft Paint. Level, 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 complete. So that's one of the things I want to look into fixing in the near future, is adding a lot more graphics and graphical effects to both the game level screen and the level complete screen. In the end, I'm hoping to have 100 total levels that the user can play. Level, 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 complete. So that's basically the progress through four weeks. Thank you for watching.